Hi there, this is Mark Payne from SFL Group. I'm here with my good friend Tim Duncan and we're uh, producing the Royal Philharmonic uh, Concert Orchestra for Fantasia Live, uh, which if you take a look, uh, we're just in setup now. We're at the uh, National Indoor Arena uh, in Birmingham. Uh, this is the last date of a three-day tour. Uh, we've been to, uh, where have we been? We've been to Glasgow and then Manchester and now we're here. Also uh, for... Um, Film, film playback, I would suggest that because the screen is so large and the images are so large, we also have to run uh, the, the audio level a lot louder than you would listen to an acoustic orchestra uh, because it needs to be a, a larger spectacle, I would suggest. Uh, because it's a, a younger audience, um, uh, also there is an expectation of a slightly larger level and there's not quite as much patience as there would be with, a, with an audience maybe listening to the uh, Royal Philharmonic Concert uh, Orchestra in, let's say, the Albert Hall. The sound system that I'm using here is L Acoustics Cara, 12 box uh, per side, which is giving me great distribution into the venue and a lot of warmth as well. And then I'm using four aside SP18 subs. We have to get the PA out, out of the way of the screen, so it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, because uh, we have to fly the PA a lot further upstage than I would really like. So the PA is a lot further back in the venue than I really want it to be, which means that we end up in a situation where we, we are putting a little bit of energy from the PA onto the stage, which is not ideal for orchestral, but there's nothing I can do about that because if we bring the PA into its more traditional position, which is on the, if you like, on the front line of the stage. The issue we have then is sight lines to the screen and, and because this show is very much about the cinematic experience we can't have the PA in the way of the screen so it is a bit of a compromise but it's a compromise that we make knowingly and with quite a lot of thought about how the the system is designed. So I'm going to stand kind of mid-stage here and if you take a look you can see where the PA is hanging. Now maybe you would have thought you wouldn't get away with doing that with an orchestra where the PA is so far upstage, but we have to compromise this because we need to get the PA out of the sight lines of the screen because the screen is the whole width of the back of the stage. And so for our wider members of the, of the audience, we don't want them looking at a screen through the PA system. Um, so when SFL, uh, SFL are responsible for the whole production of this event, that includes sound, lighting, staging, and also video, uh, we kind of think about this production in a, in a holistic sense. It's, it's not correct or right for me just to do the absolute perfect audio thing, because at the same time, the video guys are wanting to do the absolute perfect cinematic thing. So these things uh, become um, um, production choices to give the best experience to the audience. And also while maintaining the experience for the people that are performing live here. And this is the headphone amplifier, which is uh, reinforcing the, um, the click feeds that the conductor is using. We've distributed that to everywhere on the stage because it wasn't known to us before we did the first show whether any of the other musicians would want the click. Now, in reality, only the conductor wanted the click. And I think that's testament to pretty much how clean we've made the PA, that we're getting good uh, sound reinforcement for the orchestra without disturbing how the orchestra are actually working. They are still effectively working as an, um, an acoustic orchestra. There, is, there are no sound reinforced monitors on stage, which is moving away from the kind of acoustic ideal that we're trying to create here uh, for both the orchestra and for the audience. Right, Mark's invited me onto the stage here. Uh, we've basically got quite a large orchestra. Uh, it's, um, we started off with six basses, eight cellos, 10 violas, 12 seconds and 14 firsts. So it's a reasonable sized string orchestra. And each desk, we have a, a microphone to capture the two performers on each desk. And that obviously starts here with the front desk of the violins with the leader and works its way back all, all the way to the edge of the stage there where we finish off with the final desk there. Then as we come into the middle of the orchestra we bring in the, the second violins and then round about the middle area the violas start. We've got ten of those and then we've got eight to our right cellos again paired up in desks 
and finally a row or a battery of bases, as I like to call them, at the back. And in fact, here's Craig. Craig, come, come. You're not coming to do it. <laughs> Craig's our production manager and also a video specialist. And uh, he doesn't like doing things to camera, I don't think, even though he is a cameraman. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Um... <laughs>